Welcome to the Jordan and Kristen Rickard Show. The world is falling apart, but you don't have to. Join Jordan and Kristen as they discuss the challenges that face us in our decaying world every day. God has a plan for you to have victory and to be a light in the darkness. As the Bible says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Now, here's Jordan and Kristen. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Jordan and Kristen Pray for You. It's nice to see you. Hope you guys have had a great week. Hope you enjoyed our sermon uh, this past Wednesday on the idea of coming boldly before God in order to uh, ask him really for the things that you need. Now, I I want to talk about a very important subject tonight that kind of builds off the last one, all right? And it's the idea that obedience not perfectionism is, is necessary for blessings, okay? Obedience is doing the will of God. Perfectionism is this f- kind of false doctrine that the enemy wants you to buy into, this idea that you need to be like absolutely flawless in everything you do or else you're falling short of God and therefore you can't be blessed and therefore you really can't build on your relationship with him. That's a lie. It's a deception. It's a great example of the enemy trying to take something that's true and authentic, which is the the necessity of obedience, and trying to pervert it into something that actually pushes us away from God instead of brings us closer to him. And and let me explain, because this is kind of a very specific topic, and I don't mean for a minute to suggest that you can live in sin and expect to be blessed or even saved, but what I am saying is it's unrealistic to be held to, to a standard of being perfect, at least in the sense that we normally understand it. All right, let me explain. We spoke last night about the importance of coming boldly before God, okay? But we also mentioned the importance of righteousness and how it's part and parcel with that, right? Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. This is consistent with the rest of the Bible, which always tells us that to be blessed, you have to be obedient, right? Psalms 84 says, no good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Not from just anybody, but from those who walk uprightly. If you ever read Deuteronomy 28, and I'm not going to read it here because it's a very long chapter, but it talks about the many blessings of God if you fully obey the Lord your God. Psalms 1-1 is the same thing, one of my favorite verses, actually verses 1 through 6, which talks about how God wants to bless you, wants, wants you to be prosperous in all things if you are obedient. Okay, and by the way, Obedience doesn't just bring blessings. It also just brings a better, healthier life on its own. Just like, you know, following doctor's orders will make you healthy. Following God's prescription for your life will just lead to a better life in general. Okay. But that being said, obedience is also necessary for blessings, just like I showed you. And I think that's what really scares us. I think most of us, for the people who don't come into God's blessings and for the people who don't get their prayers answered a lot of times, it's not that we think, God can't answer prayers, but that he will only answer them for someone else, someone who's better than us. We see all these promises in the Bible about blessings for those who are obedient, for those who walk uprightly, who follow God's commands, and we think, well, that's not me. For most Christians who fail to receive their blessings, the failure is not that we don't believe God blesses those who keep his commands, but that we believe that's just not us because we're not perfect people. And see, that's how perfectionism, this concept of perfectionism, drives us away away from God. And after all, you know, Matthew 548 says, you therefore must be perfect just as your heavenly father is perfect. Okay, yes, that is true. Okay, God says we have to be perfect perfect in order to have these blessings. But here's the thing. Here's the part that gets left out. As long as we have submitted ourselves to the process of being made perfect, God says we are already made perfect, even though we're still works in progress. Okay, check this out. Hebrews 10, 14. This is a very important verse in the Bible, and it's not one you hear a lot about, but it says, for by a single offering, meaning Jesus's sacrifice on the cross, For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified, okay? Sanctification means to be made holy and to purify and be free from sin, okay? So when the Bible says God has perfected, means it's already done, those who are being sanctified, it's saying sanctification is a process, 
but that God calls you perfect. He calls you completed while you're still in process. That's a very weird thing. But the point is you don't have to be a slave to sin, okay? You don't have to to listen uh, to the promises that God has for you and think that you're not good enough because that's for some perfect person. As long as you are submitted to God's will in your life, as long as you've given in to God and said, God, I want you to begin and I want you to do that perfecting work in me. As long as you're doing your best through him, God says you're perfect now and therefore entitled to all those blessings that he has for us in our relationships, in our health, in our finances, in answered prayers in general. Because actually the Bible says that if you're living in sin, God doesn't even hear your prayers. But guess what? If you're if you've submitted to God, he's already called you perfect and therefore he hears your prayers. Now, the an- the enemy, again, wants to hold you to this unreasonable standard so that when you fall short of it, you separate yourself from God and his blessings, okay? That's just not what the Bible says, though. Now, I need to be clear about this, the other side of the coin. Does this mean we have license to sin? No, this means we have freedom from sin, not freedom to sin. Hebrews 10.26 says, if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Okay, in other words, the sacrifice on the cross, that doesn't cleanse you of sins if you keep doing it deliberately, you keep living in that lifestyle. These false pastors who who teach this, what, what's called basically uh, this gospel of demons, this, this grace gospel, basically says you can go live however you want and don't worry, you just, you know, uh, God just, just cleanses you of sin. Is just not it's just not accurate. I know it's popular because it basically, you know, that that kind of democratizes Christianity for more people. And we don't want to be judgmental. We want as many people in the pews as possible. And so we're just gonna say, don't worry, live however you want, okay? And you're still gonna be saved. Well, for two things about that. First of all, it's not in the Bible. And secondly, actually, if you really want to just fill the, the seats in your church, maybe you should just actually teach people the right way to live, and you'll start freeing them from the problems that they have, and then more people will go to church. That's an idea. But this idea that teaching them that you can live however you want just because that's what some people want to hear is totally false. First John 3, 6 says, no one who abides in Christ keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has seen Christ or known him. That, that, that's the kind of person Jesus talks about when he says, so many of you are going to call me master or Lord here, and you're going to get to the judgment seat of Christ. And I'm going to say, depart from me, you wicked person. I never knew you because you kept living in sin. Romans 6, 1 through 2 says, are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? In other words, do we somehow make God's grace greater by continuing to sin? Well, Romans says, by no means. How can, how can we who died to sin still live in it? See, there's a difference between living in sin, which is accepting sinfulness in your life, doing things you know you're not supposed to do, and making no effort to change it, no effort to grow out of it. Okay, I don't mean it's going to happen instantaneously, but at least putting in the effort to put it behind you. That's living in sin versus doing your best to be better and better every day, knowing that, yeah, you're still going to commit sins here and there because you're still a human being. But as long as you're not living in sin and rather are committed to overcoming sin, then those mistakes you make are simply part of the growing process as God advances you to a higher and higher level, tries to pull you out of sin and gives you more challenges and more things to overcome. That's why 1 John 2, uh, 2 verse 1 says, my little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin, okay? So he doesn't want you to sin, but he, then he says, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Okay, so this is the idea here, guys. The idea to summarize this now eight and a half minute sermon, which is way too long, I'm sorry, but this, the summary is basically this. When you look at the Bible and you see that you, you want all these blessings of God, you want to come into the fullness of Christ and you want to be close to Christ, the enemy wants to convince you that you're not good enough because you're not perfect. And that's not the case because the Bible says if you've submitted to God, then you are already called perfect right now and entitled to have a relationship with God and entitled to all those great blessings that necessarily come with a relationship with God because he's so generous. He can't help but bless you because that's what he really wants to do. He created you so that he could do that, okay? But that is distinct from knowing that you have sin in your life and just accepting it and saying, I'm not going to deal with that. 
I'm good enough the way it is. That's very different. Okay. So you don't want to get into the deception of perfectionism, which says you're not good enough and nothing you ever do is good enough. But on the other hand, you also don't want to get into this false gospel of grace. And I believe in grace, but grace doesn't mean you can live however you want and it's okay. All right. So in between those two, understand that if you're submitted to God, he calls you perfect right now. And just like going boldly before God is an important part of being blessed. Okay. Understanding that he calls you perfect right now is what allows you to go boldly before him and have that relationship with him and come into his fullness and come into his righteousness and come into his blessings. That's my message for you tonight. Awesome. Awesome. I love how you really put both of those together and drew the connection there because I feel like people either say one side or the other and there is a connection and the fact that the only way we're made perfect is by submitting to the Lord because, you know, having perfectionism or the spirit of perfectionism is really idol worship of ourselves instead of submitting to God's perfection, like you said, because his ways are are higher than our ways and his way is perfect. So our idea of what is perfect, when we say, oh, you know, this, I need to be perfect, that is not perfect. We have an idea in our heads of what is perfect, but God's ways are much higher and he alone is perfect and we are made perfect in him. So I thought that was amazing because, you know, I, I feel like there were times in my life where I could have really gone into that where just, you know, beat myself up over feeling like not perfect enough. And then I realized that I was still focused on myself instead of focusing on the Lord. Um, but at the same time, I love how you brought it to, you know, you can't also uh, just say, oh, okay, well, I'm not perfect. God knows it. And, you know, that's that's not the point. It's the matter of the heart and you want to submit to him because that's the best life ever. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. All right. Great work, Kristen. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Very good. Uh, can you can you, you. Prayer, sweetie, and please just uh, lead us all in prayer? Absolutely. All right. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you that your ways are higher than our ways. You alone are perfect, Lord. Thank you that we are not held under the bondage of a spirit of perfectionism or of just any sin at all. But we are held under, we are under your grace and we are your true grace, your truth, Lord. And we are under your covering and your perfection, God, which is the only true perfection. Lord, we submit to you in all things for all times and all seasons. For only you know what is best. And so every single day, Lord, help us to just open our hearts to you. And it's a it's not just a daily decision. It's a moment by moment decision. Help us, Lord, to keep you at the forefront of our minds instead of worshiping any idol, whether that be a sin or ourselves, Lord, we worship you alone. We come boldly before your throne. We do not hang our head low, but we keep our head held high and we come to you. I pray for any person tonight, Lord, who feels shame who I just feel like the need to pray for people tonight who have come to you and repented, but still live under the spirit of shame. Lord, you have have called them cleansed and clean from their sin, but they still live under that bondage. The enemy has them so uh, fooled that thinking that they can never escape that bondage, but that's what you've come for, Lord or thinking that they have a, a certain category or a certain, uh, you know, in, in heaven, you know, having their own designation that they can never achieve um, what, what that perfection is. I pray for each person to see themselves as you see them with the wearing the robe of righteousness. I pray for that young woman, that young man who has a past. Every single person I don't care how, according to the, the, the book of Christianity, how 
uh, how close they think they are to perfectionism, every single person has sinned. Every single person has things that they could regret, but we submit to the Lord. And when you submit to the Lord and ask him to forgive you, you are made whole. So don't you allow the enemy to tell you that your sin is worse than someone else's sin. If you, Yes, don't live in that sin. God wants to call you out of that sin. But don't live in that sin by after you've repented, just thinking that that's your place. I pray right now for every person to know that their place is in the throne room of God, that their place is with you, Jesus. And I ask, Lord, that people in the church and outside the church walls, that we would never, ever make another person feel less than the beautiful creation that you have made them, Lord. But we would make them know that you, we would reflect the spirit of God and lift each other up into where, what you have for us, God. I pray that there would also be a spirit of accountability for those living in sin, that we wouldn't just let them live in sin, but we would love them enough. When, when it is our place to do so, God, when the Holy Spirit leads to, to offer correction in certain ways so that we can make every person feel loved and valued, but also loved enough to not let them go astray. And I pray, Lord, that we would honor you in everything we do and and not only look to other people and what they're doing wrong, but be introspective also and let you cleanse us. Cleanse our hearts, Lord. Go deep in us, God. Go deep in in everything, God. Just do a whole overhaul. Let us have your eyes and your ears and your heart as we submit to you, God. Let us have your spirit working within us because everything will take care of itself if we submit to you and we have your heart about things. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to have to strive or try, but we can just release everything to you and be under your covering and be perfected in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And uh, for those of you who are watching, I'd like to apologize that there's a certain person um, who was posting inappropriate things who I've since uh, blocked off the page uh, while Kristen was praying. Kristen, thank you for that lovely prayer. And uh, just give me one second. I just want to double check to make sure that this person's not here anymore. All right. I'll I'll keep deleting these uh, comments, Kristen, as uh, as we go through our prayers. Uh, sure. I've, I've blocked the person now, so it shouldn't be a problem. Kristen, uh, tell you what, why don't you um, start with the healing prayers? We have two others that came in. Uh, Okay. So you have those four there. Uh, Lily, just add Lily, whose sister has COVID, and Sandy, who has uh, sickness in her throat and stomach, okay? Okay. Thank you. Lord, we pray for Lily, in Jesus' name, whose sister has COVID. Lord, we pray for her. We pray for Sandy, Lord, and we pray for Lily's sister, God, that you would just Come in to those situation, situations, Lord, and just do what only you can do. Just help Lily's sister to start breathing correctly and have the breath of life of Jesus and just heal her completely. And for Sandy, help her entire body to function as it should. We also ask for Daniel, who is a diabetes patient who's 30 years old. Lord, Heal him. God, there's nothing that is impossible for you. Make his body work and function as it should. Thank you that he has the faith to believe that you can heal him of this, God. For Gulzar, who says he has some problems breathing, Lord, please um, help him in every single way. I take it as not just a physical thing, but emotional. It's all tied to it. So God, just, just completely break any chains, any spiritual chains, and just completely heal him 100% in the mighty name of Jesus. For Charles from Kenya, we pray for his wife who was diagnosed with cervical cancer. Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we ask you to come into that woman's body right now. 
We ask you to heal. God, I ask you for your healing angels, your warring angels, your healing angels to come in. Lord, your hand, by your stripes we're healed. Heal this woman of this of this disease in Jesus' name. And, and many who are suffering with the same kind of thing, Lord, I pray for your healing. And for Leah, we pray for healing. She just says healing, but God, heal Leah. Lord, you love Leah. You care for her. Heal her. Heal all of these. Leah, Leah and Lily's sister and Sandy and Charles and Gulzar and Daniel. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. All right. I'll continue cleaning that up in a moment. Um, we got a bunch of financial prayers here. Let's see. Jeremiah says, hello, Jordan and Kristen. My name is Jeremiah, born again Christian from Kenya, East Africa. I feel I really need prayer. My life seems stagnated and a lot of confusion. I've been doing business for many years. I'm now in my mid-40s. I've never succeeded. Every time I start a business, it doesn't take long before it collapses and leaves me with a lot of debt. And sometimes I lose friends that rented me the business premise or even capital. I've accumulated a lot of debt. My wife disowned me since she felt like I'm a liability, telling me I no longer add value to her life. I love the Lord, but I feel bound and I need deliverance from the dark moment that I'm going through. Since this COVID story started in Kenya, I was displaced from Nairobi, where I was doing my video production business and had an office. And because I really depend on churches as my main client, I was out of business since the churches closed. I can no longer support my family. My office is taken by my landlord and I'm losing everything. I once had a car, which I lost mysteriously in an online business where I sold the car, invested in the online business and lost everything in one month. I feel something is terribly wrong in in my life and I need a word from the Lord. Please pray for me for deliverance and God bless you. In addition to that, uh, that was, that was Jeremiah. Edson says, uh, pray for my financial life. Boaz, what a beautiful name. Boaz says, please pray for God's favor to meet the needs of me and my family. And Engi Bengi says, I have money problems in my life. All right. Well, Father God, we pray, you know, deliverance is the right word. We pray mm-hmm. for deliverance. Yes, Lord. For for all of these people and from this darkness. God, these people are crying out to you. Jeremiah in particular is crying out to you. When things look darkest, God, that's when your light shines the brightest. God, I pray that you come to these people in fullness and in power. I pray Mm -hmm. that you make your presence known to these people. I pray that you meet all of their needs. I pray that all of their tithing is up to date. Father God, we thank you so much for your blessings, for your word that says that we when we do the right thing, you bless our food and water and keep sickness far from us. But God... We also bless. We also thank you that you want us to prosper in all things, even as our soul prospers. Just like we spoke about tonight, just like we spoke about um, two days ago when I did the sermon on asking with boldness. So yes, we pray for these people, but guys, we need you to ask with boldness. God, we come on their behalf with boldness and with obedience, asking you, Father God, to meet all of their needs so that they can meet the needs of other people as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, um, let's see. Kristen, uh, why don't you do, I tell you what, I'll do the uh, the ones about the, the nations. Why don't you pray, I'm going to give you three for the relationship ones. Okay, so you have already there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, Mary just broke up from a very toxic relationship and says she's hurting. And Jacob says, pray for me, I have no job and married life. Okay. Well, Lord, we pray for Mary and we, we praise you that she's out of this toxic relationship, but there is still some wounds there, God, and an adjustment period. And, um, just, it doesn't minimize the pain she's feeling. So God, I just pray, we know that you are close to the brokenhearted. Just wrap your arms around her and help her to know sometimes in situations like this, whether it's relational or you know, financial and a job clo- falls through or whatever. And we know it's your will, but there's still a sense of, is there a future? Help Mary to see that there is a future and a hope for her and, and a future uh, relationship for her that is a way better one than she has now. For Jacob, Lord, just bring everything in his life together. Accelerate the plans you have for financial, for his job and for his married life. 
and everything, Lord, and spiritually, Lord, anything that he needs to get in order, Lord, spiritually that will flow into these other areas. Please just put that, uh, just put that seed inside him and show him, Lord, and bring that all together. And for already, who says she needs prayer because she needs her marriage restored. Um, and so, yes, God, you are the God of restoration. Um, I, I, Lord, you, you restore God. I've seen restoration in so many areas in my own life. And I know so many people listening to this have, and it's a part of a testimony. And this is going to be part of Aridi's testimony about how you restored her marriage. God, Lord, she's asking for you to come in and intervene. Lord, give her the endurance and the per- perseverance and the patience as she prays faithfully, not to lose heart, Lord, not to lose heart as a process unfolds, Lord. If it's not a quick answer, Lord, help her to have the grace and the and the love and the faithfulness from you to, to show her every step of the way, give her progress and help, help bring the two of them together, Lord, bring them not just how they were before, but a new fresh chapter in their lives, a new beginning, help them to focus on you and just, just start building a foundation in you and look to you for everything in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Great job, love. I'm going to pray for a couple people real quick. who just wrote in Ruby Villar says, pray for Christy Salazar Capala, who is diagnosed with the cancerous tumor. Pray to lessen the pain for family acceptance and provision, please. Um, Julie Whedon says, I'm far from perfect, and I have been praying that I will be able to get back to work soon. It's been March 31st, and I just want to get back to work again soon so I can pay my bills. My unemployment benefits are now at zero. I just want to get back to work. Please pray that God will open up the heavens and get all of us back to work soon. Amen. I'll pray for both these people, even though they're unrelated. Father God, first of all, we thank you for Julie and Ruby. I thank you also for Ruby's friend, uh, Christy Salazar Capella. God, I'm not... Yes, we'll pray against the pain, but God, I speak directly to that cancer. I order it out of this girl's body. I pray that she is healed. I order her to just her body be perfectly restored in Jesus' name. So we're so grateful for her. And we're grateful, God, that we serve a living God, someone who's conquered sickness, who's conquered death. And God, we pray that we see a miracle for Ruby in Christy Salazar Capella's life in Jesus' name. Now, Julie is not uh, asking for a cancerous tumor to be healed, but God, you know, all we, one of the mistakes I think we make is we feel like, and Vikram's also praying for his job and financial problems. I think we think that there's like a hierarchy of difficulty for God to answer prayers. Like, well, you know, it's kind of easy for me to pray for a job because, you know, people get jobs, but like stage four terminal cancer, that's, that's a tough one. I don't know if God's going to do that. That's, that's difficult. Hey guys, it's the same God. You know, it's, it, it is no more difficult for God to answer one prayer than another than it is for me just to hit the delete button on my computer, right? And so it, it's for an all-powerful God, it's it's the same prayer. So God, just as I'm going to pray now for, for Julie's case, we know that that the situation with the tumor for Ruby's friend is is effortless for you. And we simply ask God that we ask for a miracle because we need to mm-hmm. see miracles in this life. We pray for Vikram's job as well for his financial situation. We pray for Julie. Both these people want to work. We pray for their health. God, if if it's not the job that they're in and we're in that you want for them, and God, replace that with an even better job. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Kristen, you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Can you pray for Adesh, who asked you to pray for Nepal, and also our friend Peter um, asks that we pray for Chicago? Yes, Lord. Lord, I pray for Nepal. Um, I also pray for all the missionary uh, couples I know in Nepal who are dear friends of mine um, and countries like Nepal and this entire world while we're at it. Everywhere needs Jesus, but particularly Nepal has been brought to this to our attention. And Lord, I do pray uh, that there's just a huge revival in that small nation, uh, but very populated nation. And um, that it spills over. And Lord, all the industries and uh, we pray against human trafficking and just everything in, in that nation and, and the surrounding eight nations like India. And we just pray that it would be a new revival of your spirit, God. And we also pray for Chicago. We pray for Chicago. We pray for all American cities and suburbs. 
all of America needs Jesus. And uh, these cities, Lord, there's just, I just pray for a revival in cities. I just have such a burden on my heart for the revival of American cities. And I know that that can be through media, but it also can be boots on the ground and all sorts of things. So God, I just pray um, and I just commit Jordan and I to being a part of that, however that you see fit, God. Um, but we pray that there are more and more people who come, uh, who just have that burden on their heart. And we have these cities in America that turn towards you and have huge worship services. And how awesome would it be to see just streets filled with people praising God and, you know, New York and Chicago and New Orleans and LA and Lord, we need you. And the more desperate times get and the more crazy and things don't make sense in in the natural realm, the more, uh, the closer we are to reaching for out to you. So God, come down and just turn these cities around for you. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Kristen, Kristen, I will finish off the other prayers, but there's one here I think um, you have a special anointing for, and that's for Catherine Wibble here. And why don't you just, uh, why don't you just take care of that one? Yes, Lord, we we pray for Karen. She says that she um, was trafficked. God, I don't know uh, what the situation is here. Uh, I do pray if this is something, I assume this was in the past. Um, I do pray if she is in a dangerous situation right now. I pray that you would come through as only you can come through for her. Um, and actually, I pray for an, any person who is in a dangerous situation, uh, whether here in the United States or around this globe, Lord, that you would free free uh, young women and men um, and people of all ages from this, in Jesus' name, from this horrible atrocity going on, in Jesus' name. And so we do pray for Karen as well, Lord. We pray for her. Um, we pray for her wounds, Lord, both physical and emotional, God. And there is there is a lot of things. I know we cannot, um, you know, have a, a hierarchy of what's more powerful, but I, I just got to believe one of the most powerful things that I've ever seen is when these young women and men who have been freed from human trafficking are praising God and that the enemy cannot get them. The enemy has tried um, to to get them and to just, you know, basically physically and, you know, literally and, and figuratively beat them into submission. But God has come to deliver them and to see them delivered and freed and healed God. I just pray for that. And I pray for any person who has that, any sort of bondage on them, any sort of sexual bondage in Jesus' name to be delivered. Anybody with wounds like that in Jesus name to be delivered. Cause God, those that's proof that you are God because you can go in and heal people and make them new in ways that it could not be done in any other way, shape or form by any other person or therapist or human being, but only you can do. So God, we pray that we pray that spirit of freedom. We pray that spirit of, of just your life to ignite and across this globe. In Jesus' name, amen. Great job. All right, guys, let me finish out here. So a few quicker prayers. Uh, J- Jayed and Obson both just asked for prayers for themselves. So Father God, we pray for Jayed and Obson. God, you know what their needs are. We don't, but you see all things. God, please meet their needs. Also for everybody else we prayed for tonight, Father God, uh, please meet their needs as well. Please, God, bring yourself closer to them and show them that, you know, they, those of us who draw near to you, you draw near to us. And that's really how it works. So these people also got that your goal for all of them, your destiny for all of them is for them to be victim, to be victors, not victims, to be overcomers. Okay. Not people who constantly feel oppressed, not con- people who constantly feel like there's a dark cloud over their heads, but a light in the world who that lights that bring light to other people. God, thank you for all these people. I want to thank you also right now for uh, for Kristen's mother uh, and Kristen's father as well, her whole family, for all the support they've shown us in this ministry and in our relationship. 
I want to thank you, God, for my my parents as well and uh, my family as well, God, um, and really helping us, you know, supporting us in our personal relationship and also um, in this uh, ministry as well. We thank you for their lives, God, and we, we pray for long lives and prosperity for all of them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Can you close us out with the call of salvation? Absolutely. If you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, which if you haven't yet, you really, really should, because it is the best thing that you'll ever do. It's the best decision you'll ever make. You will never regret that decision. But if you don't, you will regret that decision. So please, if you've never accepted Jesus, just follow after me. And if you want to renew your life to him, if you accepted him a long time ago and kind of slipped away, you can do that as well. We'd love to hear, have you join us. Dear Jesus, I admit that I have sinned. I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I make you my Lord and Savior. And I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, send us a message or comment in the video. We want to know about it. Absolutely. Hey, did you like during the sermon when I was kind of going off on those those pastors who uh, refused to preach against uh, disobedience? I do. I love it how you are just out there. You're just like, this is, I mean, there's no reason to tiptoe around things. It's like, this is the way it is. Like Paul, you know, Paul mm-hmm. just like put it out there. So Jordan's just like put it out there. I mean, that's a pretty good compliment. Uh, you preach like Paul, you know, that's that's pretty pretty big one. So yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. that's not bad itself. <laughs> hey guys, listen, we hope you had a great week. We hope you enjoyed the shows and everything like that. Um, so, you know, have a nice weekend and everything. We'll see you again Monday, 730 Eastern Standard Time. And as always, until then, be blessed and remember to be a blessing. Bye, everybody. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to follow Jordan and Kristen Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and iTunes. And remember to tune in next week and every week on Tuesdays at 845 on WMCA The Mission, AM 570 and FM 102.3. Amazing grace.